everyone welcome to our youtube channel this is me nikki sinha and i am here with yet another very important topic and that is yes mahajanpas so this is what we will be discussing today now before i start with the discussion let me explain what mahajanpas are now if you will remember from the decline of indus valley civilization we have the beginning of cities right or basically we have the beginning of janpads and mahajanpads now what are these what are janpads and mahajanpads so if i'm to explain you okay now from the 6 from 6th century b c e we have the creation of cities which is janpad and maha janpad now if we to talk about the literal meaning of these two terms so basically it means jan means people pad means feet right so wherever the jana has set its foot on that is known as your janpad maha janpad means the same thing it's just that it's a lot bigger maha right this is the literal meaning of the term but what does it mean geographically or uh, politically let's understand that as well so if suppose this is my empire now my empire is obviously made of small kingdoms right like the modern empire was made of small kingdoms isn't it there was kaling there was patlipotra there was rajgirha uh, there was suvarnagiri toshali isn't it so these are what these are small small kingdoms okay so small kingdoms can be equated with janpad and when these kingdoms combined together form a huge empire that can be equated as mahajanpads okay so what are mahajanpads mahajanpads are huge 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 empires right and the small kingdoms which make up that mahajanpad that is going to be what that is going to be your janpad okay so we can understand so let's divide it so all of these this is mah janpad 1 janpad 2 janpad 3 janpad 4 janpad 5 and all of these janpads together they are going to make what they're going to make one maha janpad or an empire okay so now if you refer to your buddhist text your sanskritic text or your brahmanical sources you will know that there are 16 important mahajanpads right and here we are going to learn about their capital their features their present day location why because it's very important from your question paper perspective absolutely if you refer to your previous year's question you will see that you have been asked questions from these mahajanpads from their features from their capital from their present day location you every year you will get one question so let us delve into it now let us see the features of different mahajanpads okay the first one that we have is anga so the capital of anga is champa present day what is the location present day it is located in munger or bhagalpur which is in bihar now what were its features it was an important commercial center on the trade routes and merchants sailed from here to swarnabhumi which is south east asia so what is this important for this place was located on an important trading route okay 
So that is the most important thing about this place is the fact that it was located on an important trading route. Next one, Magad. I don't think Magad needs an introduction. I don't think Magad's, Magad even needs an explanation. You have done the Mauryas, you know how important Magad is. So that's our second Mahajanpad. What is the capital? It is either, so you can use both the names, the same. So you can use Griviraj or Raj Griha. Fine. Present day location, it is in Gaya or Patna. So both the areas combined. What is its best feature? See guys, Magad is known for a lot of things. But most importantly, it is known for what? So it was the center of Jainism. And the first Buddhist council had taken place at Raj Griha. So this is the most important feature or the distinctive feature of Magad. Moving ahead, Kashi. Also, Kashi needs no introduction. Kashi Banaras, Kashi Vishwanath, you know it, right? So the capital is Kashi, okay? Present day location is Banaras. What is the feature? The city got its name from two rivers, which is Varun and Assi, which has been mentioned in the Matsya Puran. So Matsya Puran tells us that Kashi has been given the name Kashi from two rivers, which is Varun and Assi. Kashi was captured by one another Mahajanpad, which is Kaushal. The next one that we have is Vatsa. Capital is Kaushambi. Present day location, Allahabad. What are the features? Okay. Now, this Mahajanpad followed a monarchical form of government. Now, you'll ask me, why is this even a mention? Most of the Mahajanpads will have a monarchical form of government, isn't it? No. Actually, that's not the case. So, there were Mahajanpads like Vajji. They had a republican or an oligarchian form of government. What do you mean by that? So they were not democratic, absolutely not. It's just that instead of having one ruler, they had a group of people, usually elders who had a lot more experience. They would be ruling together. They would all be known as Rajas, fine. And they would all be ruling together. They would all be taking decisions together. So yes, there were certain Mahajanpas which had an oligarchian form of government. Okay. Now, after the rise of Buddha, the ruler Udayana, he had made Buddhism a state religion for Vatsa. Now, Ashoka also had accepted Buddhism, but he never made Buddhism into a state religion. He was all about tolerance and everyone was free to follow their religion, right? Okay, so uh, let's move on to the last one for this lecture and that is Kaushal. So Kaushal actually has two capitals. The northern sector, the capital is Shravasti and for the southern sector, the capital is Kushavati. Where is it located? Western UP. What is the feature? This place was the center of Krishna worship at the time of Mikyasthanis, the center of Krishna worship. Also, there was a dominance of Buddha's followers as well. So, one of the important kings, Avantiputra, he was actually a disciple of Buddha. So, here in this lecture, we have talked about the concept of Mahajanpad and Janpad, and we have learned about the features, location, capital, of certain Mahajanpas here. Now, this is part one of the video. In part two of the video, I'm going to continue with the same discussion of other Mahajanpas. So, I really hope that you found this video useful. I really hope that you understood this video. If you still have any difficulties, please feel free to address them in the comment section below and I will definitely take it up. Till then, Please take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.